Gandhi National Open University presents a program for the foundation course in science and technology. Course code FST1, Block 4. We bring you a talk entitled The Forest Ecosystem, written by Dr. N. A. Huck. He is a scientist in the Central Pollution Control Board. In Unit 14, 15 and 16 of Block 4, you have studied how various living and non-living components of the environment form an ecosystem. In this program, we take the example of forest as an ecosystem and try to understand the undesirable effects if its delicate balance is disturbed. Our Earth is probably the only planet in the solar system which has life. It may be existing on other planets too, but so far it is not confirmed. Life on Earth originated in water, and it continues to exist because water is present here. Some other resources which are helpful in maintenance of life on this planet are soil, air, nutrients and so on. In addition to these, various forms of living organisms present on the earth also serve as resources. Continuity of life is not possible in isolation. Living organisms are interdependent. For example, human life is not possible without plants animals, bacteria and so forth. Similarly, trees too cannot exist alone. They depend on other organisms for their existence. In ecology, such units which are self-supporting are called ecosystems. An ecosystem consists of living organisms and their non-living environment as an interacting system existing together. The living organisms include plants, animals and microorganisms. Non-living environment may include air, water, nutrients, etc. The ecosystems may be of different sizes and structure. Even a self-supporting household aquarium is an ecosystem. A pond, a lake, a forest or an ocean may be other examples of ecosystems. The only condition necessary for a system to be called an ecosystem is that it should have plants which produce food with the help of sunlight, it should have animals which consume plants, it should have decomposers which decompose dead bodies and recycle the nutrients and it should be self-supporting. I am sure all of you are aware how a forest functions as an ecosystem. There are small plants and large trees which produce food. There are herbivorous animals such as monkeys, antelopes, deer, goats, etc. which eat the plants. The herbivores are eaten by carnivores such as tigers, lions, wolves, etc. When the plants and these animals die, decomposers destroy the dead materials and the nutrients and other elements get recycled. Similarly, other ecosystems function. If any of the components of this ecosystem is eliminated, the complete ecosystem will collapse and there will be no forests. Now let us see how it is possible. As far as elimination of plants and trees is concerned, you very well know that there can't be any forest without these. So let us take the example of carnivores like tigers, lions, wolves, etc., what will happen if they are eliminated? As soon as these animals disappear from the scene, there will be no hunters for the herbivores. This would lead to uncontrolled increase in population of herbivores. These herbivores will graze on the plants, reducing the growth of plants. In due course, population of plants, including trees, may reduce drastically and the existence of the forest itself will be threatened. No doubt, later even the herbivores will disappear because they will not get food, but before that, the forest will disappear. 
Similar will be the case if decomposers are eliminated. In that event, not only dead bodies will accumulate, but also cycling of nutrients and other elements will stop. Again, the existence of the complete ecosystem will be in danger. Hence, complete ecosystem must be viewed as a unit. However, an important development during the last few decades, which you must have also noticed, is that there is a lot of concern being shown about forests and wildlife. People talk about preservation of forests and wildlife. A second question may be asked, after all, why do we need these forests? The answer is that these forests are not only essential as suppliers of forest products such as timber, wood, certain medicines, fibers, etc., but also help in maintenance of climatic conditions. Another benefit of forest is that it acts as a storehouse for characters which may produce new species and varieties. Similarly, the wild animals living in the forest serve various uses. They keep the forest intact and healthy. Now let us look at the result of elimination of wildlife. Elimination of wildlife, either plants or animals, may result in disappearance of forests. If forests disappear, it would affect rain, climate, ambient temperature, and it would also lead to wide-scale soil erosion in the area. The eroded soil particles will be washed away with rain and cause siltation of riverbeds, reservoirs and seashores. This type of siltation leads to floods. The recent spate of floods in our rivers is generally due to siltation. Disappearance of forests may be due to various factors, such as large-scale felling of trees or due to overgrazing. However, most of the time forests appear on account of clearing, which is done to get more agricultural land. But it is interesting to note that this process, which is meant to boost agriculture production, can adversely affect agriculture itself. Whenever forest vegetation and animal population is disturbed or reduced, several types of pests transfer themselves from their wild hosts to domesticated ones. For example, the Colorado potato beetle, which earlier lived on natural vegetation, transferred itself to crops. Similarly, malaria-carrying mosquitoes, which earlier were parasites on animals, transferred their attention to the human population when they found their original host disappearing. This is the reason why we find that many diseases, pests and weeds, date only from the time when wide-scale wildlife destruction and adoption of agriculture started. It is suggested that 33% of the land must be covered by forests, which is essential for a proper balance in the environment. In India, according to official figures, only 19.5% of the area is under forest cover. Unofficial sources claim that only about 10 to 15 percent of the area is under forests. Even if we consider the official figure to be correct, the situation is not comfortable. In addition, the rate of deforestation is higher than afforestation, which means that we are bound to lose more forests with time. Already, we have innumerable problems due to forest disappearance and further loss will only increase these problems. Soil erosion, floods and droughts have become a recurring affair. A variety of wildlife species are also threatened on account of danger posed by human population. The danger is directly in the form of hunting and poaching and indirectly on account of deforestation, industrialization of forest areas and spread of road network through forests. This trend cannot be permitted to continue. We have to choose between the two options, man and nature, or man in nature. Certainly the second option has to be chosen. Man must learn to live in nature and should not try to change it so much that it itself becomes unfit. We have to go beyond the environmental ethic of a lovely view or a nice day. 
we must actively think in terms of preservation of the wildlife resources. It can be achieved through preservation of the existing wildlife, including plants and animals, and providing them the opportunity to regenerate and expand. Threatened species have to be protected and, if necessary, propagated under controlled favorable conditions. They have to be saved from the danger of natural calamities too. Reserve forests, wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, etc. are some of the steps which are being taken in this direction at national and international levels. World Wildlife Fund has contributed a lot. Also, in our country, large number of wildlife reserves, sanctuaries and reserve forests have been created. The government has enacted Environment Protection Act, Forest Conservation Act, National Wildlife Action Plan, National Forest Policy, Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park and so forth. These steps have saved several species such as tigers, lion, one-horned rhino, elephant, crocodile and so on which were on the verge of extinction. Now their population is increasing. Similarly, several plant and tree species have been saved from extinction. All this is going to add more charm and happiness to the life of none other than to the human race. You have just heard about the various living components of the forest ecosystem coexisting in nature. These living components are dependent on each other as well as on various non-living components of the ecosystem. Now you know that if this balance is disturbed, the entire ecosystem may collapse and problems like soil erosion, flash floods or droughts may result. You should realize that these basic facts would apply to other ecosystems as well. Therefore, great caution and care should be taken before you try to interfere with the ecosystems in nature. The Forest Ecosystem You have just heard this talk written by Dr. M. A. Huck and narrated by S. N. Sait. The content coordinator for this program was Dr. S. S. Hassan. It was produced by Om Prakash Deval. This program came to you from the Communication Division of Indira Gandhi National Open University.